Minnesota Community Voices. My name is Omar, your host, Senior Cultural Partnership Strategist for JD Sports and Finish Line. Today, we've got a very special guest, personal friend of mine, Sam, what's up? What it do? How you feeling? Doing well, thanks. So yeah. just, to, just so people know who you are, who, who is Sam, you know, for the people who don't know? Who is Sam? Um, Sam is a light, intense, divine spirit, you know, in physical form here on this earth to just make my imprint, to change lives, support into people, and to complete my mission. That sound. Oh, I mean, it sounds like <laughs> life to live. Yeah, Sam. Right. <laughs> Um, so cool, let's get right into it. So <clears throat> throughout Community Voices, one of the topics that's been uh, presented to us a lot is opportunities for the youth, especially when it comes to like the black and brown community and just within the inner city, inner city excuse me. So what are some things that we could do to help provide more opportunities and, you know, education so kids see that there's other, you know, avenues they could pursue in their life to become great and successful? Um, I mean, I think the first thing that we do, because everything starts in the home. So for the kids in your home or the kids in your family and the kids that you're around, you know, make sure you expose them to everything. Like, I feel like they're, you know, outside of the black and brown communities, like Jewish communities are sitting down with their kids at dinner time and telling them about the businesses that they're going to be running as soon as they graduate high school, you know, and what the world looks like. So I feel like we need to have those conversations with our children, speak power into them when it comes to what's going to take place in their future. Make sure that you're helping them to set up a plan um, and yeah, just be open with our kids. And then also outside of the home, get involved with you know, different programs that are already out there for children or start up your own programs and be like the adult that you would want for the kid inside of you. So when you were young, whatever you felt like you wanted or you needed outside of what you got from your home, like be that adult for a child, whether that's somebody in your family or whether you get involved on a community level. Definitely. I think that that family, you know, that's where it starts. And mm -hmm. it's a good point to bring up and once that is whole, then, you know, everything else starts building up on top of that. But definitely family is super important when it comes to, like, uh, kids, especially with yeah. Exactly, exactly. Next question for you. So another topic that's been pretty constant for uh, Community Voices is Black-owned business. And, you know, okay. so how would you describe, what are some, like, the challenges uh, being faced by Black-owned business owners? And how can we uh, help improve those situations so you know outside of the like socioeconomic challenges that are there from us just getting the shorter end of the stick as african americans and as brown communities um i think our major two challenges to me are would be you know number one being disciplined enough to say like hey the holidays are coming up but I'm only giving my money to, you know, black owned businesses, or I'm not going to support this company because it's not aligned with my beliefs. And I feel like, you know, developing that discipline is necessary. And it's something that I feel like a lot of, you know, people in the community lack, like we'll be on so, so like emotionally connected to something for a second, but we're so like one track minded that soon after you know the buzz dies now we're back kind of back onto the norm and we forget that we our money you know makes certain companies rich so at the end of the day we need to put pour all of that love and all of that support into people that look like us yep. um and then the second thing that i would say is you know we are our own worst enemies sometimes and i feel like we need to get a deeper level of understanding and we need to unite with our own more because a lot of times we tear each other down and you'll see somebody that looks like you and is doing well when you're supposed to just like appreciate them and support that person as your brother as somebody that is within your community it, it triggers insecurities and we end up you know being our worst enemies and pulling somebody else down just because we feel like we're not doing as much as them or we feel inadequate inside so i feel like the hatred of our own is a big 
a big issue that holds us back as, you know, from evolving and from blossoming as much as we should when it comes to black businesses. And then also, you know, just making sure that we're disciplined enough to support our people and we're not giving our money into these other, you know, large corporations that really don't care about us. For sure. And even for me, like, I just take a conscious effort just to think about any local business or like a uh, black owned business that I could help support, especially when it comes mm-hmm. to like, for example, like what are mm-hmm. some of these like black owned businesses that I could support and buy from versus like the usual, you know, the usual brands that anyone might uh, exactly. buy from, you know? Exactly. No, no, I, I feel the same. Like I just, there's so many people that are, that I know personally that have businesses right now. And I feel like that's another thing. We just need to like support our own and then put people onto, you know, people that we know, because there's a lot of people, you don't have to necessarily go and, you know, go to Target to get your hygiene soap products, body wash, when there's somebody that, you know, that's selling uh, soap that's actually better for your skin. It's going to have better ingredients in it. um, And it's love poured into it. And it's somebody that looks like you trying to get a business going. So I feel like, like you said, like, making a conscious effort to think about like, who are the people around me that have the necessities that I need instead of, you know, just going with the norm or going with like, what's the easiest option for me? Like, let me think outside the box and let me try to give my money to somebody else before I give it to a target or before I, you know, I give it to these, these other companies that I don't know me from a can of paint. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially within like, when you talk about spending money and supporting your community, you know, when, when it comes to like the black dollar, as soon as it gets made, immediately mm-hmm. the community that, you know, that you're in versus other mm-hmm. you know, ethnicities where it circulates a couple of times before. Mm-hmm. Happens. So being able to support those local businesses. Right. goes a long way, so. And I think that goes back into kind of what we just said for, you know, the last question. It starts in the home and in the family. And I thought like we need to teach that to our children young, like, hey, you know, Black equity and building Black wealth is something that is important. And that's not going to get done as if as soon as you get money, you give it, you know, outside of this collective. So but like these are conversations that need to be taught and instilled into the youth. Um, so as they grow up, that is their norm, you know, and we're building up healthy habits instead of breaking bad ones. Yep, absolutely. And then moving on to the next question, which is, you know, something very important, especially now, is especially with quarantine and COVID and people just by themselves for Mm -hmm. extended periods of time. So why do you think people are more open to having these conversations about mental health, whereas like, a few years ago, years past, people might have not been so vocal about having these kind of conversations. Um, well, I think that right now, like a shift is occurring. It has occurred and is still in the process of occurring. A shift of the mind, a shift of the collective. Um, some people call it like new world order, but I feel like people are waking up slowly and understanding that you know the mind is a very, very, very powerful tool. You know, the mind leads and the body follows. So um, I think that people with COVID and everything, people had a chance to really sit down um, for once and kind of tune out from all the distractions. You really didn't have a choice. You couldn't be on the move and on the go and kind of just trying to put different things on the back burner. You were faced to, you know, face them and you had to, things were exposed and brought up. And I think that made people really have a a deeper level of understanding of what it is, what self-care really is and how important the mind is and how powerful the mind is. And, um, you know, I think that obviously slavery has impacted a lot in the black community and, you know, specifically on how we view mental health. And um, I think, you know, before it was just like, you know, be strong and, you know, this is going to, whatever you go through is just going to make you stronger. And us, like, we, the Black community also has been affected um, by lack of healthcare resources as well. So I think that, and then it's just been so much compiled up when it comes to the healthcare system in general towards Mm -hmm. Black people that we don't really trust it as much as we should. Um, And not not even as much as we should, because a lot of times they really don't deserve our trust in certain areas, but we just have this um, 
we're a relationship with it. We don't have access to a lot of the health care that we, like we should within our communities. So if somebody doesn't have access to it on a physical level or doesn't really trust it on a physical level, it's even harder to try to trust it on a mental level, which before was just looked at as like a luxury. Yeah. Um, so, but I think now people are understanding that, um, yeah, the mind is, is very powerful and we have to keep ourselves healthy there because that is like, you know, our foundation for everything. Absolutely. And it's up here that pretty much tells your whole body what to do. So being able exactly. to stay healthy and you're able to just, just vent and have someone to talk to and just mm -hmm. you know, flesh out how you're feeling. It goes a long way. No, for sure. For sure. And there's so many ways to do that too. You know, I feel like we need to take the, you know, it's, it's, there's so many levels and avenues to where you can help heal the mind. And that doesn't necessarily what it looks like for one person. It might not look like that for you. You know, maybe this one person does need to talk to a therapist. I feel like therapy is good for everybody, but some people, if you don't, if that's not the, the road you want to take, you don't have to, you can, you know, exercising is good for the mind. It's going to increase endorphins. You know, what you eat is good for the mind, making sure that you don't consume too much like dead animals that, um, when underwent trauma when being killed and slaughtered and now you're taking in all of that type of energy as well that's going to have an effect on your brain um, making sure that you're taking time for yourself and not overworking yourself um, and having those me times and learning how to just sit in stillness and be quiet and um, reading and you know adding more knowledge into your mind and your mental capacity to where you actually feel more empowered when you are faced with things. Um, and now you have more tools to deal with things because with the mind, if you don't have the tool, then something can, you know, it can easily break the mind down. But if you understand like what that is and you have the tools to deal with it, then it's going to, you know, affect you and impact you differently than somebody that doesn't have the tool. So there's so many things that you can do. I feel like to take care of the mind right now and people are aware of that and, it's like the, the time is now with everything we have to, we're, we're dealing with a lot as a collective mm -hmm. um, right now on so many levels. So I think that people realize like, no, this is something that is necessary for me to take care of because if not, I'm just going to go crazy. And exactly. that's not, you know, that's not the, the best option. For sure. And for me, what works for me is uh, I definitely love my me time because it just allows me to sit, you know, this mm -hmm. track. And just kind of think of everything what of like as far as like things I got going on what I plan to do and things of that nature so mm -hmm. you know, that's something that works for me yeah no for sure me too even like turning your phone off sometimes mm -hmm. and like disconnecting from certain things and just just focusing on being present because I think you know we're using our minds so much as well sometimes the mind needs a break like just be present be in the now you know, you don't have to worry about what's next or what's to come. Just sometimes, like, appreciate the stillness of that, you know, very moment. Absolutely. And then the last question for you is the Dream is You Foundation. I know that's mm -hmm. a group that you work pretty, uh, pretty closely with. So talk us through the work they do and their impact on the community. You said talk us through, say, say the last question. Uh, the work they do in the community and it's okay. so dreamers youth is a program that um, it empowers children to tap into their creative self um, mm -hmm. different things that wouldn't necessarily be presented to them or given to them at school things such as DJing um, music production photography videography art um, so engineering, so many different things, so many different avenues, as well as mentorship. Um, and then also focusing on um, a healthy mind, healthy body. So getting the kids outside and getting them into different sports that isn't necessarily a, an avenue at the school as well getting black kids out of the mindset that they just have to play basketball or football. There's so many other sports out there. And um, we just did an event for skateboarding and skateboarding is going to be in the Olympics soon. And I feel like, you know, that is um, 
it's not as prevalent in the black community as it should be. So getting people out that look like them that are like, look, I look like your dad or your uncle or, you know, your cousin or somebody. And if, you know, the kids see that it resonates on a different level If somebody that looks like me can do it. then I really have a, a deeper belief that I can do it myself. So yeah, dreamers basically just exposes children to so many um, arts and sports and avenues out there. And, um, you know, lets them know that they can tap into their God given talents and can also make a career out of them and also giving them a mentor as well that is in that same field that they're interested in that can talk to them um, because a lot of kids, you know, they don't feel as comfortable talking to their parents about everything. You want somebody that is not biased, that you don't feel like it's going to judge you or get upset with you or, you know, it's just outside of that home life and, you know, you can just talk to them and depend on them. So Dreamers kind of provides all of that in one. Nice. And it's funny you mentioned sports because I've always wanted to like play tennis growing up. Yeah. I mean, in New York, there's like no tennis fields or nothing like that. Yeah. Tennis. Always like basketball or maybe like a field to play football or baseball sometimes, but. Right. Yeah, no, for sure. Like eat tennis, golf, mm -hmm. you know, um, surfing. That's something that we are um, trying to put together right now, a surf program for the kids with dreamers. But just I think everything is about exposure, right? Because right. a lot of times, you know, some people know exactly what it is they want to do. And then other people don't know. But that doesn't mean that they're not talented. They just haven't had the chance to be exposed to something, right? So we've seen literally kids come in, never DJing before, never making a beat before, and like blowing our minds first time being there, you know? And they figure out, oh, this is what I like. Or coming in with the mind frame, thinking that you like something else, but then doing another thing and realizing like, no, this is my, you know, this is what I'm good at. This is what, you know, strikes something in me. But I feel like, yeah, the exposure is just so important and the schools don't really offer, you know, too much right now. So we want to be a um, organization that you don't have to pay for. Um, mm -hmm. and you could just come and literally learn, develop, expand and just feel empowered and understand that it doesn't matter where you come from, what your home life is like, what your environment is like all these people that are mentoring you and that you're talking to, they actually came from struggles as well and look where, where they're at right now. So they could do it. There's no reason that you couldn't either. Absolutely. And that's why I like those extracurriculars are so important because you never know if you're good at something until you try it. So especially exactly. when you're at the young age and you're able to do like all types of things and programs like yours where it's like, all right, cool. I even know I could play golf and then you do it. You're like, oh, right. Sure. You're good at it. You I'm know. actually good. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. And it's just, it helps build confidence too in kids because once you, when you start early and you figure out that you're really good at something, it just, you know, it just unlocks a level of like happiness within yourself. You, you feel, you know, you feel like you, you're making your imprint and you feel like you're really doing something that um, is important. Mm hmm Cool. And with that said, you know, we love what you're doing. Thank you. Person, and with the Dreamers Youth Foundation as well, and giving kids these opportunities to try new things that in normal circumstances they want to be able to or even have access to. So with mm -hmm. that said, we at JD Sports and Finish Line want to make a nice donation of 15000 Wow. <laughs> youth program. That's huge. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Sure. That is amazing. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. And we know that money is going to go to great use, especially, you know, connecting kids with things they just haven't seen before. So, for sure. You and the Dream of Youth program. And yeah, that's all I got for you today. <laughs> Thank you, Omar. I appreciate you. This was, this was great. We got to do it again. Um, yeah, and just keep it going. I think what you guys are doing is awesome as well. And this is how you start that Black equity and wealth within the communities, like these conversations right here, these type of things. So I appreciate you and, you know, everyone on the team. And let's get it. Definitely. It means a lot coming from you. So um, thank you again for taking the time out of your busy day 
to come sit with us at Finish Line JD. Of course, of course. And yeah. So I okay. got thank you again. I appreciate, you. Cool. I appreciate you. Hit me whenever. Let's do this again. You already know. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.